Tofino is well known as the surf capital of Canada, but explosions in tourism have substantially driven up the house prices, making housing affordability not so great for the locals. Today though, we've traveled to Tofino to meet a young couple who have built an exceptionally beautiful tiny house on wheels to help get them out of the rent trap. Hey, Alan. Good to see you, man. Nice to meet you, mate. Hi, Hi. Vanessa. Lovely Hi. to see you. Nice to meet you. And lovely to meet your incredible home. What a beauty she is. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guys come to be living in a tiny house? Short story is we decided to get out of the rental market. I ended up living in an RV for a little while. And then uh, we decided that we couldn't live in an RV for too much longer. So we just decided to go all in. We bought a trailer and then I guess the rest followed. So this tiny house here, what, what are the materials? The wood looks really lovely in this and I love the way that you've broken up the weatherboards with the shingles as well. Right, yeah, so it's uh, mainly cedar. Um, we've got the, the 10 inch panels and then we've just decided to do this at the top here. Just to, like you said, to break it up. And I see you've got the service box here so you're all hooked into power and water. Yeah, luckily this was uh, previously an RV spot so we've got power and um, the sewage as well. Well, I'm really excited to have a look inside the house and see what you've done. Cool, come and have a look. I absolutely love what you have done in here. And these wooden features are just so striking. Mm -hmm, thank you, yeah. Um, both cedar, big slabs of cedar. This one in particular, I really like. It was gifted from a carver here in town, a Feather George, so it's from his actual property. It grew on his land. And uh, yeah, he gifted it to us here, so I'm really happy with that. And you've got all of your musical supplies over here as well. You're yeah. obviously musicians. Yeah, I mean, when I first moved into the house, I set, this was the first thing I set up, and it kind of delayed me in completing the house. You got a little distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was just making my music when I should have been finishing the house. So yeah, it's a really nice space to, to work from. And the, the bench here, it actually doubles up. It's designed to pull out and sit on the end and you can use it here. And you can also twist it around and sit too at the desk if you wanted to as well. Now, I absolutely love what you've done with the light fittings. That's so clever. Yeah, so there was some leftover shingles from the top side of the house. I just decided to use those. So I found the um, the switches online and just ordered those. I just wanted that chrome finish. And yeah, I just cut them out and stuck them on. And it's so nice when you actually walk into a space where those are customized because it can make all the difference, can't it? I think that's part of the joy of the tiny house movement as well, is being able to customize it to, you know, each person's own style. And of course you were building a tiny house for two people as well. So how did you find the process of actually blending both of your needs to make the space work for both of you. I had a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, and, which is helpful. Yeah, and <laughs> we, I don't know, we both have similar styles. We like the kind of cozy cabin feel and just all the wood and, you know, the driftwood. I love the driftwood thing too. It's so simple. Like, you know, this piece was gifted from a friend down the road and I found some stuff at the at the lake. So it just makes it feel a bit more raw and rustic and we're, we're nature lovers, so we like to have that raw feel, which is why these beams are the way they are. Mm -hmm. And so moving into the kitchen now, again, the bench just becomes a complete centerpiece, doesn't it? Yeah, it took a, a while to get it shaped and sanded down, so a lot of time spent on it. We, we always thought of having a cedar countertop right from the very beginning, so I'm glad it worked out finding the right piece. And you've gone for a very simple approach when it comes to actually storage and cabinetry. Like I see pots and pans are exposed down there. You've got some pull out drawers there and then you've just got some shallow storage up here. Yeah, the kitchen was really important to me. Um, I just really wanted it to be functional and not feel crowded and crammed in here. So that's why we chose actually to do it in the part where the ceilings are higher as opposed to say underneath the beams, um, just cause it makes it feel so much more spacious. And we've got the dining space behind us. So, you know, this is where you're stood up for most of the time. So we wanted the high ceilings there. And talking about the dining table as well, I think it's so clever how you've approached this, especially incorporating the stairwell into seating for the table. Yeah, I think because of the m minimized space we have, we have to try to think about what we can use and how we can use it wisely. Yeah, the bottom step is actually, it actually opens up as well for storage. So yeah, you've got the, it opens up from the top for some storage and there's also a little door on the front too. So different options and then the stairs obviously lead up and you've got uh, storage. Just used some, some old cedar 
and stuck it all together to make the doors here. But uh, yeah, it came together pretty well. And then behind us as well, we have the bathroom. Yeah, it's a pretty small space, but it's very functional. We've got a shower, we have the sink, which is not quite yet fully installed, but it's there. And then the toilet just around the corner there. You've done a brilliant job of squeezing that shower into that space. <laughs> yeah, it's a small one. It's just two foot by two foot, but it works for us. And I see you've actually squeezed a water heater in here as well. Yeah, it works out really well. It's a through floor vented water heater, which means I don't have to sort of put it out of the wall. So yeah, I could just sink it underneath the bathroom sink there. And what do we have above us here? That's our little Zen Den meditation zone. So you can go up there and read a book or do yoga. Later on, I'm gonna to have to get you to show me what you mean by doing yoga in <laughs> That definitely does not look like a yoga Tiny space yoga. to me. Tiny yoga. All right, okay. I really love what you've done up there with that octagon window as well. That just adds such a lovely accent to the loft. Yeah, I, I think I saw it on Pinterest somewhere and I was like, I need that window. <laughs> <laughs> and the sleeping loft is over the other side. Sure is, yeah. All right, let's see how it is. Get a little bit of a leg workout here with the stairs a bit steep. The stairs are really <laughs> steep, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, it works out. I mean, we did it just to save some space there. Like I say, we're, you know, we're still young, so we can make it up the stairs, no problem. And the design of this loft is absolutely lovely. I'm gonna come over here and join you. Perfect. Yeah, we all fit. <laughs> Very cozy indeed. So how are you both finding the transition into tiny house living? Yeah, really loving it. It's been awesome. It's really cozy. And we have a metal roof on here too. So in the, when it's raining, you hear that. And it's, it's warm. Uh, we've, we've got sheep's wool in the walls for insulation. And that kind of deafens the sound a little bit. So it's really nice and cozy in here. You just hear the, the rain on the roof. So you've actually used a lot of natural materials in this build then. Is that part of your own ethos when it comes to building? Did you set about to actually build a natural tiny house? Pretty much, as yeah. As much as possible, yeah. That was uh, one of the key factors in our build was using as natural materials as possible. So yeah, the sheep's wool and the natural cedar. We haven't used any chemical stains. This is, you know, we've stained with like hemp oil oil and flaxseed oil just to keep it as natural as possible. And can I ask you about the budget? How much did this house actually cost to realize? It's around I think 36,000 Canadian and that's without paying myself anything to build it. For a build of this quality that's an exceptional figure. Yeah I mean well, we were paying 1100 a month for a one bedroom and the sooner you get out of the rental market then the quicker you can get towards your goal with the house. So now that the tiny house is almost finished, what's next for you both? Well, we have uh, toyed around with the idea of getting some land. You know, having that security of your own land is key because we don't know how long we are gonna be able to stay in this particular spot. But yeah, land I think is the next phase. Well, this home is completely charming. I've really enjoyed being walked through it. I think you've made some really interesting and really lovely material decisions that have just brought out some wonderful character. Congratulations on an exceptionally well done project. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it with me. This home is beautiful. The design is brilliant. The build is exceptionally well executed. But what I really like about it, talking with Alan and Vanita, is the amount of pride that they have in this home. It's truly theirs. They designed it, they built it, and this is a place that I have no doubt they will be happy to call home for a long time to come.